if I would have said at the beginning of the year, Mets are going to the World Series, you would have said? No. I would have said, heck no. That team was dead in the water uh, the first uh, four months of the season. Uh, that I've never seen a deadline deals that were made by a general manager, Sandy Alderson in this case, uh, that had such an impact on a ball club. Uh, this club, even with the starting pitching, was going nowhere. It wasn't hitting. wasn't scoring runs. I knew Harvey won, what, 13 games. He should have won 20. And Cespedes came, and I, he did things that I had never seen a player do to carry a club to a division flag with the 17 home runs in two months. And then you get in the playoffs, and you've got Daniel Murphy, who's doing it in a more condensed period. <laughs> You know, he's hit half of his home runs that he hit all year. Uh, hit 14 in the year uh, season. It is absolutely the second coming of the amazing Mets. Better pitching staff, 86, 69, or these Mets? Well, I think that the ceiling is a lot higher for this group. Um, they've got to do it. They, they've had only one year. Syndergaard's a rookie. DeGrom's a second year, I guess. Uh, it's a third year for Harvey, but he's missed a year there. So uh, they're young, and the future's in front of him. Mats is a rookie. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's the most incredible starting four that are all under 20 that I have ever seen. And uh, if you were to compare our starting four with Doc, Darling, uh, Sid, Fernandez, uh, Bobby Ojeda, uh, if this, if they, if they play up to their potential, pitch up to their potential, and keep improving, it's better than our starting five. But no one's better than Doc. Oh God! I, I tell people to cover that team. I was working for CNN at the time, and to go watch Gooden pitch. I, I went as a fan one day. You're playing Montreal, and uh, I think uh, Denny uh, Martinez was pitching against Doc, and it was a game in May, and I sat behind home plate. And I felt bad for the Expos because Doc had two pitches. He had fastball and he had the curveball. Yes, he did. And I felt bad for the Expos that day. It was, and he was 24 and four the one season. Oh, that was 85 yeah. when he won the Cy Young. It was an incredible year. Uh, Bob Gibson, like Koufax type year. Um, he was incredible to play behind. It was very electric. You know, if he struck out nine guys, if he didn't do double digits, you'd say, well, you come in and needle him and say, what, what's wrong with you? You had a bad night. <laughs> You know, he'd throw a shutout and strike out nine instead of 15, yeah. you know? But I think the expectations were too high for him by the media, it felt like. Like he was living up. No matter what you do, it didn't seem like it was enough after a while. Well, I guess we all have our demons, and he was up at 19. Just remember, yeah. that rookie year he had when he broke, uh, was it Herb Score's record? I think it was Herb Score that had the uh, record for rookie strikeouts. He was 19 years old. Yeah. You know, that's a couple of years removed from high school. Think about that. That's amazing. Yeah, a year out of high school and you're in yeah. major leagues. Keith Hernandez joining us here in the man cave. Uh, Don Mattingly got fired. Well, oh, he did? mutual parting by the, the Dodgers there. Uh, surprised? No. Um, but I'll tell you what, uh, for a $300 million team salary overhead, that was a pretty, uh, you got, I mean, no, I don't want to, Justin Turner is a very fine player. But is he a cleanup hitter? I, I don't think so. Uh, for a $300 million salary, uh, that was, uh, you would think that would be a star, star, a star studded team uh, with every possible superstar. And it wasn't. I mean, they just basically relied on their two starters. I didn't think it was a great team. But I, and I actually, you know, people say you're crazy to say it, but Mattingly, I thought, did a good job managing them. I know strategy wise, he was always second guessed, but he won three division titles there. You know, Carl Crawford's contract. I mean, they. Oh, I know. It wasn't a great lineup, and I thought they had two great starting pitchers. Bullpen was still a little shaky as well, and they end up winning the division. So I thought it was World Series or bust that, that it gave the Dodgers an out if they didn't. If they didn't go, then Mattingly was going to lose his job. Well, I think everybody uh, knew that Don had to go all the way this year, or at least get there and lose. If he lost, he probably would have survived. Um, that's the expectations. Their new ownership is a little bit tough, and they're willing to spend the money. And you got that kind of money laid out there. Uh, they expect, uh, you know, success. And there's a lot of people in the game now that are running the game that aren't baseball people. You know, there's more that goes into uh, the game than just uh, statistics. But are you an analytics guy? 
I am not. Um, I know that Saber metrics are very key here, and there's a lot of guys coming in. Now, the new general manager for Milwaukee uh, is uh, is came in from Jeff Luna from Houston. Luna from Houston, one of those Saber metric guys. Uh, there's another general manager hired. I can't think of the team off the top of my head. He's an MIT guy. He's under he's under 29 years of age. Yeah. <sighs> There's a there's something to saber metrics. I like some of the stuff, and the other stuff I can just get it. Get me a big trash can. I'll throw. <laughs> it's a waste of paper. So, uh, but if you look what uh, the job that the Cubs have done, uh, Epstein, Theo Epstein, a saber metrics guy. Sandy Alderson's a saber metrics guy here with the Mets. Uh, Luna uh, with Houston. Look at that turnaround. That's pretty remarkable what they've done in Houston yeah. o- overnight. So there's got to be something to it, but I think it, it has to be a tender balance. You're getting away uh, from having the baseball people who have a, that played and have been around that have a sense for an athlete. There's just, it's stats are too sterile. And the, the, the problem is some of the sabermetric guys are very arrogant and they think that you know, we don't need these you know, baseball guys. And you read the, oh, that's a Dodger guy. They fired around 30 Dodger scouts. Did you read about that? No. The guy came in from MIT and had an essay, three essay questions for all the scouts. I just found out last night. And they had to write, uh, answer the essay, the three questions in an essay form. And basically it was based on how are you going to come and when you evaluate a player, you're going to come to me with the numbers I need from Saber Metrics. And those that didn't pass, 30 of them didn't pass. It. They were fired. With an essay test? Yes, three questions. I heard that last night. You can look it up on Google. McLovin, do you know about that? No, I'm actually not seeing a lot You're of reporting not, on it yet. So. But there, someone told me there was a, they just like dis, dismantled their half of their scouts. Scout. Sounds kind of like the movie Moneyball. I mean, yes, I well, yeah, that's what we're talking about, basically. So the point being is that there are uh, there are good things in Saber metrics, but I think, you know, the one thing that drives me crazy, you hit the home run, you watch in Turner broadcast, which was painful. Um, <laughs> the, the exit velocity of a ball. Oh, no. I can, I'm a baseball <laughs> guy. Yeah, he hit the crap out of it. <laughs> yeah, he hit it, 109 miles an hour exit I, I just it's silly it's absolutely silly but it, it once again you're trying to get a younger audience to buy into this sure. product you're trying a lot of different things here and i i not that that's going to make my son go boy i can't wait to to see what the exit speed is on that you know a baseball right friday night <laughs> And baseball is a statistic-oriented sport. You know, when we were kids growing up, you know, we were looking in the paper and, and, you know, more so in the Northeast. I grew up in Northern California. But I always looked at the box scores, always looked at the Sunday paper and looked at all the batting averages and you check, you go through the list all the way down, all the players that had enough at bats. And that's part of baseball. Uh, It's gone to a different level now. But I do think that uh, there's a lot of good that comes out of it. I think it's for analyzing players and building a team. But I, I think that both can, can, can work together. Uh, I remember the 86, game six of uh, the 86 World Series. And I want to ask you about this because I'd heard where you were during the rally. Yes. Okay. Um, and also, if, if your locker was, as I walked in, the first one on the left? Yes, I can look down the hall. Yeah. Into Davey's office, the okay. manager's yeah. office. Yeah. And the press would come in and walk. Yeah, and I also have to ask you about your beer of choice that it looked like there was always a six-pack of this type of beer. Michelob. Yeah. Bottle. Yeah. Never yeah. never good in a can. Yeah. No, I, <laughs> I, I, I'm i telling you, I went in the locker room, and I looked there, and there were six you know, full beers there. Everywhere. Right by your locker. Yes. And I went. And yeah. they, they would be gone after the game. Before I, got, before I went home, they were gone. <laughs> All right, I want to I ask you about where you were during that rally, the Bill Buckner uh, baseball game. Uh, Fritzy, what, you want to ask him about Seinfeld? Yeah, no, I just love that two-part episode, but, okay, we'll, but uh, we'll, yeah, we'll get oh, into that oh, after. Okay, and then Paulie wants mix, uh, mustache advice as well from you. Yeah, Keith is first team all mustache team, yeah. so I need some advice. Yeah, so, I mean... On your mustache? Yeah, yeah, but not yet. Oh, not don't yet. do that, Keith! <laughs> no, no. Oh. wait, hold on. We'll, we'll, we'll continue with Keith Hernandez. <laughs> oh boy, Paulie, this is not going to be good. We'll do so next here on the Dan Patrick Show.